beg your pardon. Oh, you needn't. I have no right to be here either. Now, what do you mean by that? I thought perhaps you were playing truant, as I am. Playing truant? I was looking at the house, you know, and I got tired and ran away. Well, to tell the truth, so did I. It's dull work, isn't it? I have been upstairs and down for two hours. That family portrait gallery finished me. It was so old and gloomy and dead that I began to think as if I were dead myself. I just had to do something. I wanted to jab my parasol through the window pane. But I was afraid of shocking the agent. He is such a meek little man. He seemed to think so well of me. If I had broken the window, I would have shattered his ideals of womanhood too, I'm afraid. So I just slipped away quietly and came here. I've only been there a half an hour or so, and we've only been in the ba- I've only been in the basement. I've been cross-examining the furnace. <laughs> Do you know anything about furnaces? I don't. Do you like family portraits? I hate them. Why? Do they come with the house? No, thank heaven. They've been bequeathed to some museum, I'm told. They're valuable historically, early colonial governors, and all that sort of thing. But there is someone with me who, who takes a deep interest in such things. I thought I saw you at the real estate office in New York yesterday. Yes, he was with me then. I thought I saw you there with him. Isn't he just the sort of man who'd be interested in family portraits? Well, since you've asked me... I'll... Oh, that's all right. Tubby's a dear in spite of his funny old ideas. I like him very much. Yes. He's so anxious to please me in buying this house. I suppose it's all right to have a house, but I would like to become acquainted with it gradually. I'd like to feel that there was always some corner left to explore, some mystery saved up for a rainy day. Tubby can't understand that. He drags me everywhere, explaining everything. How we'll keep this and change that. Dormer windows here and perhaps a new wing there. I suppose you've been rebuilding the house, too? No. Just decided to turn the sunny south room into a study. Uh, make a very pleasant place to work. But if you really want the place, I hate to take it away from you. I was just going to say that if you really wanted it, I'd withdraw. It was Tubby's idea to buy it, you know, not mine. You do want it, don't you? I can't say that I do. It's so infernally big. But Maria thinks I ought to have it. Maria is She's my... the one who is interested in furnaces. I understand. I saw her with you at the real estate office yesterday. Well, furnaces are necessary, I suppose. Do you see that bee? A uh, bee? Yes, there. The rascal, there he goes. Uh, have you heard the story about the people that used to live here? No. Why? The agent was telling us. It's quite romantic and rather sad. <laughs> you see, the man that built this house was in love with the girl. He was building it for her as a surprise, but he had neglected to mention to her that he was in love with her. And so, in Pike, she married another man, but she was really in love with him. The news came just when he had finished the house. He shut it up for a year or two, but eventually married someone else, and they lived in there for 10 years, most unhappily. Then they went abroad, and the house was sold. It was bought, curiously enough, by the husband of the girl he had been in love with. They lived there till they died, hating each other to the end, the agent says. It gives me shivers to think of that house haunted by the memories of wasted love. I wonder which of us will have to live in it. I don't want to. Oh, don't take it so seriously as all that. If one can't live in a house where there's been an unhappy marriage, why, good heavens, where is one going to live? <laughs> Most marriages, I fancy, are unhappy. A, a bitter philosophy for one so young and beautiful. Listen to the rest of the story. The most interesting part is about this very orchard. Really? Yes. This orchard, it seems, was here before the house was. 
It was part of Mont Far where he and she, the unhappy lovers, you know, stopped when they were there out driving to get something to eat. The farmer's wife was busy, but she gave them each a glass of milk and told them they could eat all the cherries they wanted. So they picked a hatful and ate them, sitting on a bench like this one. And then he fell in love with her. And he didn't tell her so. So you see, this orchard is haunted too. I can feel it. I seem to hear the voice of that old-time lover whispering to me. Indeed. What does he say? He says, I was a coward. You must be bold. I was silent. You must speak out. That's very curious. Because that old lover isn't dead at all. He's a congressman or senator or something, the agent says. It's all the same. His youth is dead. His youth is what speaks to me. You mustn't believe all that ghosts tell you. Oh, but I must. For they know the bitterness of silence, the folly of weep. The circumstances were slightly different, weren't they? I don't care. Please. It's, you simply mustn't. It's disgraceful. What's disgraceful? What you were going to say. Only that I love you. What is there disgraceful about that? It's beautiful. It's wrong. It's inevitable. Why inevitable? Can't you talk with a girl in an orchard for half an hour without falling in love with her? Not if the girl is you. But why especially me? Oh, I don't know. Love is a mystery. All I know is that I was destined to love you. How can you be so sure? Because it was as though I had been groping about in the dark and then, then sunrise. And there's a queer feeling here. And to tell the honest truth, there's an even queerer feeling in the pit of my stomach. It's a gone feeling and my knees are weak. I now know why men would fall to their knees when they told the girl they loved her. It's because they couldn't stand. And there's a feeling in my feet as though I were walking on air and I, I could die for you and be glad for the chance. It's perfectly absurd, but it's absolutely true. I've never spoken to you before, and heaven knows I may never have a chance to speak with you again. I would never forgive myself if I didn't say this now. I love you. Love you. Love you. Now tell me I'm a fool. Tell me to go. Anything. I've said my say. Why don't you speak? I have nothing to say except that I, well, I feel some of those symptoms myself. You love me. I don't know. Yes, perhaps. Then kiss me. No. Kiss me. Oh, what's the use? Oh, I don't know, and I don't care. All I know is that we love each other. I don't care either. I do want to kiss you. It is wrong. Is it? But oh heavens, kiss me again. <laughs> Darling. Do you suppose anyone is likely to come this way? No. Your husband is probably still in the portrait gallery. My husband? What do you mean? You didn't think. You thought poor old Tubby was my husband? Isn't he your husband? No! He's my uncle! Your uncle? Yes, of course! Do you suppose that I would be married to a man that's fat and bald and 40 years old? I beg your pardon. I did think so. Just because you saw me with him. How ridiculous! But the things you said, you spoke so realistically about marriage. It was your marriage I was speaking about. My marriage? And to whom, pray, did you think I was married to? To Maria. Maria is my aunt! Yes, of course. How stupid of me. Let's get this straight. Are you married to anybody? Certainly not. As if I would let myself be kissed if I were a married woman. Now don't put on air. You did something quite as improper. You kissed a married man. I didn't. It's the same thing. You thought I was married. But you aren't. No, I'm not married. 
and, and you're not married. In fact, yes. In fact, there's no reason in the world why we shouldn't kiss each other. Why not so? Then, then shall we? Oh, not if you don't want to. <laughs> well, under the circumstances, I should begin by asking you to marry me. You don't seem very anxious to. <laughs> it's not that. Well. Well. Oh, dash it all! I, I don't know your name. I was to stop you a while ago. <laughs> oh, well. Will you marry me? No. No? Why do you say that? Why should I marry you? I know nothing about you. I've known you for less than an hour. That didn't seem to stop you from, from kissing me. Besides, I don't like the way you go about it. If you propose the same way you kiss me, maybe I'd accept you. All right. <laughs> Beloved. Oh, I can't do it. Oh. I'm very sorry. Perhaps it's because you don't love me anymore? No, of course I love you. But you don't want to marry me, I see. Uh, I do want to marry you. It's just, well... Well what? Marriage is... A serious matter. Now, don't take offense. I only meant that it's all... Well, we are in love with each other. And that's the important thing. And I know if we continue to bond, we'll love each other still. But we must get to know each other first. You're just like Tubby buying a house. You want to know all about it. Well, I warn you that you'll never know all about me. So you need to try. It was your suggestion. Oh, all right. Go ahead and cross-examine me if you like. I'll tell you to begin with that I'm perfectly healthy, and that there's no TB insanity or socialism in my family. Now what else do you want to know? But why did you include socialism with insanity and TB? Just for fun. You aren't a socialist, are you? Yes. You do know what socialism is, right? It's the same thing as anarchy, isn't it? No. <laughs> At least not my kind. I believe in municipal ownership of streetcars and, and that sort of thing. I'll get some books for you to read. Well, I never ride in streetcars, so I don't care whether they're municipally owned or not. By the way, do you dance? No. You must learn right away. I can't bother to teach you myself, but I know we can get private lessons and become really good in a month. It is stupid not to be able to dance. I can see myself doing the tango. The tango went out long ago, my dear. Well then, I won't learn to dance, and you should know that to begin with. And I won't read your old books on socialism. You should know that to begin with. Come, come, this will never do, my dear. It's not that I won't learn to dance. It's that I can't, and there's no use for me to try to learn. Anybody can learn. I've made expert dancers out of the awkwardest men. Well, I won't dance. It, it's, I have no inclination for it. It's out of my world. And I have no inclination toward municipal ownership. It's out of my world. It ought not to be out of the world of any intelligent person. All right, if you want to call me stupid. It seems that we have very few tastes in common. So it seems. If we were to marry, we'd be happy for a month. Perhaps. And then the old story quarrels. I never could bear quarrels. Then unhappy marriage. Oh. I can't marry you. Nobody asked you, sir. Then there's nothing left to say. Except goodbye. Goodbye, then. Goodbye. 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 <laughs> Oh, dash it all, we do love each other. <laughs> A pity that is the only taste we have in common. Do you suppose that's enough? I wish it were. A month of happiness? Yes. And then wretchedness? No, never. We must control ourselves. Yes. Let's. I wish you happy. I'll, I'll go to Europe for a year. Try and forget me. I shall be married when you get back, perhaps. I hope that somebody who's not 
bald and fat and forty. Otherwise, and I'll- you, for goodness sake, marry a girl that's very young and very, very pretty. That will help. We mustn't prolong this any longer. If we stay together another minute- Then go. I can't. You must, darling, you must. Oh, if only someone would come along. Excuse me. The agent. Oh, too late. Too late. No, just in time. Too late, I say. I will go. No, stay. What's the use? It has already begun. What good can I do now? Stay. I'll show you what good you can do. Could you come and unloose my hands from those of this young woman? You needn't trouble. I can do it myself. Thank you. It was utterly beyond my power. Could you kindly take me and move me over there? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Perhaps at this distance, I may say farewell in a seemly innocuous manner. Young man, you will not say farewell to that young lady for ten days and perhaps never. What? They've arranged it all. Who will arrange what? Your aunt, Miss Brooke, and your uncle, Mr. Egerton. Egerton? Are you Helen Egerton? And are you George Brooke? Your aunt and uncle have just discovered each other up at the house, and they've arranged for you all to have dinner together tonight, and then off to a ten-day house party at Mr. Egerton's on Long Island. The reason of all this will be made plain to you. They want you two to get married. Then we're done for. <laughs> we'll have to get married whether we want to or not. What? <laughs> just to please them? I shan't do it. You don't know my Aunt Maria. Tubby will try to bully me, I suppose. But I won't do it, no matter what he says. Pardon what may seem an impertinence, miss, but is it really true that you don't want to marry this young man? I suppose just because you saw me in his arms. <laughs> oh, I want to, all right. But then I... what seems to be the trouble? I, oh, you explain it to him, George. Well, it's this way, as you may have deduced from what you've seen. We are madly in love with each other. But I'm not madly in love with municipal ownership. That's the chief difficulty. No, the chief difficulty is that I refuse to entertain even a platonic affection for the tango. I told you the tango went out long ago. <laughs> Fine, then. The meshish. Stupid. And there you have it. No doubt seems ridiculous to you. Not at all, my boy. I have no marriage to go to smash on far less than that. What do you think about it? A taste for dancing and a taste for municipal ownership stand at two ends of the earth away from each other. They represent two different ways of taking one. And if two people who live in the same house can't agree on those two things, well, they disagree on a hundred things that came up every day. And what's the use of two different beings trying to live together? It doesn't work, no matter how much love there is between them. Then you're on our side. You'll help us to not get married. Your aunt is very set on it, and your uncle too, miss. We have to find some way to get out of it, or they'll have us cooped up together in that house before we know it. Can't you think of some scheme? Perhaps I can, and perhaps I can't. You see, I'm a bachelor myself, miss, which means I thought up of many a scheme to get out of marriage. You old scoundrel! <laughs> oh, it's not as bad as you may think. I've always gone through with the ceremony to please them, but that's not what I call marriage. <laughs> then what do you call marriage? Yes, I'd like to know. Marriage, my young friends, is an iniquitous arrangement devised by the devil himself to drive all the love out of the hearts of lovers. <laughs> <laughs> they start out as much in love as you two are today, and they end by being as sick of the sight of each other as you two will be in five years hence if I don't find some way of resting you alive out of the devil's own trap. <laughs> you see, it's not lack of love that's the problem with marriage, it's marriage itself. And by marriage, I don't mean promising to love, honor, and obey for rich or for poor, in sickness and in health till death do you part. That's only human nature to wish and attempt, and it may be possible if not for the iniquitous arrangement of marriage. But what is the iniquitous arrangement? That's the trouble. If I tell you, you won't believe me. You'll go ahead and try it out and find out what all the unhappy ones have found out before you. Listen to me, my children. Have you ever been on a picnic? Of course you have. Everybody has. There's an instinct in us which brings us back to the ways of our savage ancestors to gather around a campfire, cooking meat on pointed sticks, eating it with our fingers. <laughs> but how many new books would you write, young man, if you had to turn to the campfire stay, to return to the campfire every day for your lunch? And how many new dances would you invent if you had to live eternally in the picnic stage of civilization? No, the picnic is incompatible with everyday living, as incompatible as marriage. But, but... Yet there it is, the nest-building instinct. You feel it, both of you. And if you don't now, you will as soon as you are married. 
If you are fools, you will try to live all your lives in a love nest, and you will imprison your souls within it, and the devil will laugh. I'm beginning to be afraid of him. And so am I. <laughs> <laughs> and if you are wise, you will build yourselves a little nest secretly in the woods away from civilization, and you will run away to this nest whenever you feel in the mood, and then you will return, refresh the civilization, where every soul is different from every other soul, and you will let each other alone, forget each other, and do your own work in peace. Do you understand? He means that we should occupy separate sides of the house, I think. Or that we should live apart and only see each other on weekends. I mean not that you should not encumber love with civilization, nor stifle civilization with love. You say you want a fellow student of economics. You're wrong. You say you want a fellow dancing partner. You are mistaken. You want a revelation of the glory of the universe. It's blithering nonsense, of course. But it was something like that a while ago. Yes, when it was our first kiss, and thought it to be our last. Kiss is always the first kiss and the last, or it is nothing. He's quite mad. Absolutely. Mad? Of course I'm mad, but. Ah, here you are! That you've given us the slip, eh? Escaped from the asylum, he did, a week ago, and got a job here, and we've been searching for him high and low. Uh, come along now. What's the matter with him? Matter with him? He went crazy, he did, reading the works of Bernard Shaw. And if he wasn't in the asylum, he'd be in jail. He's a bigamist, he is. Married 14 women. Only a none of them would go on the witness stand against him. Said he was an ideal husband, they did. 14 of them! Otherwise, he's perfectly harmless. Perfectly harmless. That explains it all. Yes, but I can't help thinking that there was something in what he was saying. <clears throat> well, are we going to get married or not? We have to decide this before we face your aunt and my uncle. Well, of course we'll get married. You have your work and I mine. Well, if we do, then you can't have that sunny south room for the study. I want it for the nursery. A nursery? Yes, babies, you know. Oh, good heavens. Ha, 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 ha!